How's it going? And welcome back to James Chats. Now, I'm a full-time Twitch streamer and content creator, which means that I spend a tremendous amount of time at my computer and, by association, a tremendous amount of time sitting. To remedy this, I've been wanting to get a sit-stand desk, but it needs to work for streaming as well. I Meaning it needs to hold multiple monitors, lights, cameras, microphones, you name it. It needs to be able to hold all of it while still having the sit-stand function. So I decided to build the ultimate sit-stand desk for Twitch streaming. There is a lot to talk about here, so I'm gonna do my best to try to break it down into categories. First, let's talk about the legs that make this whole thing possible. I chose to go with a frame that I found on Amazon from a company called AI Terminal. It is a dual motor frame that comes with memory functions, a 260 pound lifting capacity, a very reasonable $300 price point, and arguably the most important part, a five year warranty that covers not only the frame, but the electronics and motors. Getting a frame by itself means that it is cheaper and it gives you the flexibility to use basically whatever tabletop you would like. And since I already had one, I didn't have to buy it. Speaking of which, let's move on to the tabletop. I'm using the 78 inch Ikea Linmon. It's only $48 new and I've already been using it for a couple of years so I know it's reliable. I've thrown a lot of this thing and it has proven to hold up surprisingly well, even though the inside is basically just a bunch of folded up cardboard. So I was already covered with the tabletop, but it was a little bit scuffed and I wanted a fresh new look. So I picked up some vinyl wrap on Amazon for $20 to give it this wood grain look. And honestly, it turned out really good. I was a little worried when I when I purchased the, the vinyl. And even when I first got it, I was like, there's no way this is gonna look that good. But once I got it on the table, it turned out great. It actually looks so good for just a $20 vinyl wrap. It wasn't that difficult to install and it completely renewed the table. It gave it a new life. A new life for 20 bucks, not bad, not bad. I also added a bit left over for an additional piece of furniture, but we'll get to that in just a minute. I also added some two inch grommets for cable management as well as a power grommet. I do a lot of crafting at my desk and being able to plug in my hot glue gun right there is just such a quality of life improvement for me. Instead of having to hunt around for an outlet or a power strip or anything like that, I can just plug it right into the top of the table. And there's a couple of USB ports there as well, so whatever charging I need to do or powering I need to do for something that I'm only gonna be using for a little bit, boom, I can plug it in right there, done. Now, if you're just looking for a motorized sit-stand desk and you don't wanna build all the rigging on top like I did, you can just stop here. The frame, tabletop, and vinyl wrap is $370. Before tax, so it'll add a little bit on there, but $370 is a really good price for what you're getting. And while I've only been using it for a couple of weeks now, I do have complete confidence in these legs. They have a high lifting capacity, a five-year warranty, and they got some solid reviews on Amazon. Not to mention that it's it's clearly capable of holding up a pretty good deal of weight between the rigging, the monitors, the, the, the equipment, and of course, this, this big boy right here, that CRT television. If you, if you have lifted a CRT TV, I know there's some, some younger folks watching this and maybe you've never even, never even looked into a CRT. Wow, that makes me sad. <laughs> it makes me sad. They're heavy, they're heavy. But to me, as someone who likes to play retro games, I feel like that is the ultimate way to experience them. I digress. Like I said, you can stop here, but I'm sure a lot of you watching this are wanting to know how I put together the rigging on top of the desk. And I must say, I am very proud of what I came up with. What you're looking at here is the Steeltech series from Lowe's. It's basically just steel conduit, but it's designed specifically for DIY furniture building. It's a little bit cheaper and a lot more flexible than the, the standard steel conduit that a lot of people have used for DIY furniture building in the past. It's, I mean, it's where they got the idea. They saw people buying this, this steel conduit for, for DIY, so they're like, you know what, let's, let's make this a little easier on folks. And it works great, it works great. They do have the Steeltech series in both a black finish as well as a raw finish, but for some reason stock was either very limited or very disorganized when I went to pick them up. So I ended up getting a mixture of the two and then I just ended up spray painting it all black. So it worked out for me, but hopefully you can find them all in the finish you're looking for. Now here's exactly what I purchased for this build. We've got three of the 36 inch long pieces that I'm using for the legs or the vertical height 
of the rigging, as well as three flanges to connect them to the desk, three 90 degree elbows, a 72 inch length across the top, a 12 inch piece connecting the top length to the back leg, and a two of the cross joints. One cross joint for the length across the top and one located just underneath the monitor arms for added security. Now the monitor arms do come with this desk attachment which has a wider diameter than the Steeltech series we're using here. This is more of like a, a one inch diameter where those are three quarter inch. And so it, it was a different sizing, but I was able to use a three quarter inch PVC coupler with a slit cut down the side using my Dremel as a shim. So I was able to make up the difference between the two and still tighten down the monitor arms onto the rigging. And the total cost for all of the Steeltech stuff that I used, the pipes and the fittings, came out to $100, which means that the final cost of the frame, the table, and the rigging up top came out to under $500. Not bad. Obviously that doesn't include things like my cameras, the super clamps, the lights, and the monitor arms, but all of that is really dependent on your setup. I won't go into too much detail about my equipment in this video right here, but uh, just know that I'm attaching all of it to the rigging using just super clamps with ball heads or, or magic arms. That's it, that's, that's the beauty of the rigging is that anything I need to attach to it, I can just get a super clamp and it's there. And it's there, that's why I wanted to do it. And I'm using a suspended china ball light and just a lamp for my primary lighting. It's simple, it's elegant, and it looks really good. I did mention earlier that I had some extra vinyl wrap, so I was able to put it to good use with an Ikea Alex drawer unit. I got the drawer unit on Craigslist for like $30 a while back, and I thought I would just update the look to match the desk by painting the outside black and applying that extra vinyl wrap to the fronts of the drawers. It was a bit of a pain, but it still looks really good. Like I'm, like, I'm surprised with how good it looks. And once it was all built up and ready to go, all I had to do was manage the cables. It took me two days. Two days! It was a beast. It was a journey. But I did it. I did it. And you know what? I did pretty darn good. Starting at the outlet, I got this little cover over it to protect it, and then I have two power strips coming out, one going off into this little conduit here, and one going into this cable management spine. This allows the cable to stay in one area while the desk lifts and lowers, and it makes it look really nice. I also have an ethernet cable going to my computer, an HDMI cable going to an HDMI switcher, I'll show you that in a second, as well as an RCA cable going from my retro consoles up to the television. And then that one, like I said, is going through that little conduit into a cable management box. And since I couldn't fit all of my retro consoles inside the drawer unit, I have my GameCube and my Wii sitting back here, just kind of tucked away behind it. And then I'll continue getting that in just a second. Let's go back to the desk. Okay, here we have all of my power going through this power strip. It has outlets along three of the sides as well as some USB outlets. So very versatile, very nice. This is what my lights are plugged into. So I have, I mean, I can kind of demonstrate it here, but it has a remote that I have sitting on top of the table that allows me to turn the lights off and on with a remote. I also have my, my back lights hooked up to one of these as well. This of course is the power grommet, which is just plugged into the power strip there. And then I'm using these little cable management ties, which are actually really great. You can you can undo them and, and re-tighten them and add cables to them. And they have what seems to be a really good adhesive. So I'm, I'm digging that. Right there, I have a USB hub. I don't have that many USB ports on my computer. So this is just a USB 2.0 hub for things like my Xbox 360 controller adapter, uh, the webcam I use for my green screen box, all of that stuff. Right here we have my HDMI switcher, which I have my my secondary camera going into my RetroTink 2X Pro. So my retro games are going through this and my secondary camera and it has two more ports in case I wanna add other HDMI options to it. And those are just going into my Elgato HD 60S over there. I also have my, my CamLink 4K right here, which is then running an HDMI signal up through there to my primary camera. So yeah, it, it looks a little messy, but it's actually really, really quite organized. And when you're looking at it from the front of the table, you really can't see anything going on. You can kind of see this sticking down because it's it's so much, but uh, other than that, it looks really good. All right, before we go topside, let's also look in this drawer unit here with my retro stuff. 
So in here we have the PS1 as well as my Retro Tink and the S-Video switcher. All those cables are running out the back. Super Nintendo, N64, PS2, NES, and all of those are wired to go into here. Not all of them are plugged in at once, like this is for my Wii, but I rarely use it. So if I do need to use it, I can just swap it out and it works. I mean, it's only five ports and there's like seven consoles here. And then around the back, you can see I have some, some cable sleeve going around all the cables to help guide them so they don't get all caught up on the, the drawer unit and the other cables. Okay, going top side, here we go. Like I said before, I installed some two inch grommets. We got one here for the back of the television. We've got one right here for a lot of the stuff that's going up to the top of the rigging, monitor cables, HDMI cables for the cameras, power cables for the cameras, you name it. And then I have another one situated right back there for all my computer cables to pass through. And of course I'm using cable sleeving to tidy that up. There's a lot of stuff going on here and that makes it look really nice. I do have a wireless mouse and one thing I saw in another YouTube video is I have a little charging cable plugged into the USB cable on the back of this monitor so it can retract when I don't need it. Bada bing, bada boom, it's gone. I of course have my stream deck here and the cable for that is then going into this sleeving as well. And the sleeving continues all the way up here to where it splits off to the camera, the microphone, and this light over here. And then I just use these, these Velcro straps which blend in very nicely to the, the black paint. And that's basically it. And as you can tell, I mean, it looks real, like until you get to here, you don't see anything. You don't see anything at all until you get to like right there. Right there, boom, everything's gone. Everything is gone and it looks wonderful. Oh, and I briefly mentioned down there my green screen box. This I use for getting close up shots that can go over the screen with a transparent background. It has a little LED strips in there and a little green screen on the back so I can show things off very close without it really interfering with the stream. And there you have it, the ultimate sit stand desk for streaming and content creation. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I look at it and I feel a great sense of pride. I did this, <laughs> I did this and it's so good. Hopefully this video sparks some inspiration for those of you looking to build your own sit stand desk for streaming and content creation. And heck, if you wanna do exactly what I did, more power to you, all right? I made this video as a blueprint. Feel free to get as creative as you want or follow it to the T, that's up to you. And if you're looking to pick up anything I mentioned in this video, I will be leaving links, of course, in the video description. The Amazon links are affiliate links, so if you decide to purchase because of this video, I encourage you to use those. It gives a, a small kickback to the channel and supports what I do at no extra cost to you. And of course, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't shout out my Twitch channel. If you wanna come hang out, I stream like four days a week, multiple times a day. I'm streaming all the time over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jameschats, link in the video description. Make sure you come check it out. It's a great place. It's a great place, great community, fun vibes all around. All right, I'm gonna go. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the next video.